What's going on everybody? It's Hydro Hybrid. We're going to take some clones today. Um, these plants have been underneath of the, uh, the Spider Farmer SF4000 for, I don't know, just a few days. You know, just over the Christmas uh, weekend. So, we're going to take some cuts now. Um, I'm going to show you what I like, what I don't like, the, uh, the, the do's and the don'ts, and what you can possibly get away with and what you probably can't get away with before I just start cutting away here. So let's move to this one here because this is the greenest one here. So if you look, a lot of people go, oh, I got purple stems and that's, that's part of the healthy, that's part of the health of the plant or the part of the strain because it's a purple dominant strain, they got purple in it or something's going on, you know? And uh, that's generally not the case. Like 90% of the time that is not the case. When your plants are in a vegetative state, they should be green. Now you can see that this one has some purpling um, next to where it breaks off and it splits and it lies down next to the lower nodes. And this is borderline for me. So what I mean by that, let me see if I can get you even closer. There we go, maybe borderline meaning like half if you rotate it you see a lot of green 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 but then you see those intervenial magnesium uh, issues popping up right there and I hope you guys can see that I don't want to go too far with this there you go maybe that's a good but it's not super dark purple trust me and there are more than probably more than what you guys can make out on camera you know with my naked eye there's a lot of green stripes breaking up that purple now this is not 100 percent ideal conditions for taking clones by any means i'm going to disclose that right now but what we need to do is uh weigh the risks know what you're working with what you can get by with and what you can't get by with and move on and uh, to support the rest of this uh, grow journal documentary so moving with this now comparing this stem that I just showed you with all this not a lot I would say it's broken up to maybe like a 60 maybe like a 60 40 like because there's a lot of green is there but there's a couple couple stripes down there that down the centers vertical stripes down the center of those that are that are streaky with purple so that's not ideal okay but we're gonna take clones anyway because you can get away with that what you can't get away with is nothing that I directly have and here's um, a water leaf if you got stems that look like that and what I mean stems not by a water leaf stem I mean the main stem Okay, if your whole stem is purple, see, this is kind of what it, this is what it looks like. I can see it through the camera better. This is what the other one looks like. Why it came out more clear here, I don't know. But you see how there's purple vertical streaks going up that main stem towards the lower nose that rises up and it gets greener and greener as it goes towards the top. You can get away with that stuff. Here's another good indicator. Is it pliable? Okay, it's pliable. Okay, we can take clones from that. Now, if you're really in the lower bottom part of the plant, it's going to look more purple than the top. Because if you got magnesium deficiency or toxicity issues going on, you're, it's more susceptible and more obvious as you get lower in the plant. For instance, look at that. That is solid purple. That's a huge difference between... I would not, absolutely not, take this one as a clone. We're going to leave it. We're going to leave it because we're going to take all these top ones, the healthier ones that are more lush, more green, more flexible. We're going to take those for our clones and leave the lower stuff to make its way up. And that's essentially topping the plant, taking clones at the same time. So it's kind of two birds with one stone. But if you get into this, See how these main stems are solid, solid green? And they're, they're nice and flexible. That's a really healthy plant. And I know you see some, you know, 
Um, this fucking thing is just, you know, I don't want to be too vulgar about it, but use your imagination, you know. She got some camel toe going on there. She just wants to freaking boom. She wants to bust out those those flowers for us. You know what I mean? So she's, I mean, this is just how this strain rolls. It's always like this in flower, but it never will, it will never throw pre-flowers and veg. We're safe. It doesn't hermaphrodite in flower, so we're safe. I've run that strain before and uh, it's fantastic strain. It's a cross of uh, Skywalker OG. And uh, this right here is my, my, the Gorilla Glue. So the plan is to get enough cuts off of this Gorilla Glue to where I can run at least two thirds of this room Gorilla Glue. And whatever we come off with on these back plants, I prefer the Skywalker because I don't think I've run that one with you guys yet on camera. We're gonna go ahead and use that one as well. And uh, this is the Northern Lights uh, cross. As you guys have seen, it's kind of obvious. So being that we've been under light for under this Spider Farmer SF4000 light the last couple days, you guys can see a lot of new growth coming off. And how you can define that is you're like, you look at it, it is a lot of new lime green growth. In the middle here, that lime green, lime green growth starts and it just breaks out and that's all new development new development those are good indicators that your plant is responding healthy um, and good to the the new lighting conditions you don't see anything sad nothing burnt everything's flexible nice and lush you can feel that it's perspiring you can feel that the, there's actually some moisture in the leaves and the stem feels great so you know, it, like this one, it's a 60-40 split on the top growth, you know, with, with the uh, with the purpling, but that's fine. If it was any more purple than that, I wouldn't be taking cuts. But for the sake of saving ourselves some time and knowing what I can get by with and what I can't get by with, you're less likely, if you take cuts that are really purple like that, I can almost guarantee you with certainty that those are not gonna root. I'm not saying that they there's instances where they don't root. Sometimes you'll get them to root, but literally nine out of 10 of them won't root. So I'm looking forward to a more successful rooting session. We want this top stuff up here. Um, those are the, that's the most healthiest stuff on this plant, as well as this one. And you guys can clearly see the difference in the main, the main stems, you know? That's, yeah, like I said, a 60, 40 split, 60 green. You know, maybe even a little less on the purple, but you guys can clearly see that you've seen it enough. So we're going to take some cuts off these ones and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. So obviously we've got three different strains here. The intentions are to run a few of them on the, on this, on this grow journal. Um, bear with me here. Um, if you don't want to watch or listen to everything prior to just cutting and snipping, then just go ahead and fast forward. I'll leave a time. Uh, a timestamp there for you but uh, we're about to outfit the rest of this room with LEDs today and it's a perfect time to start taking those clones so I can go ahead and set the clone tray down here and let this tent kind of do its thing while we're setting up this room here so um, with that said let's go over here I'm gonna show you the products that I use and what I don't use anymore because things have changed trust me things have changed I have over the years, I've been, you know, kind of sold things or let's believe things. Other things work better than others. And, you know, we're, we all go through that. That's those spells. So I'm guilty. I'm guilty of that. What I use today is we got some basic dome, dome trays. Okay, you can see those. They might look different from your, your, regular, your regular domes. And uh, they got this larger... Uh, air release here on top. I don't necessarily use it. They also got some sides here on the bottom. It's irrelevant to which ones you get. They both work fine. Uh, I think this is like seven or eight inches tall. We got some trays and I laid out some cubes here and they've been soaking uh, preferably overnight but these ones 12 hours is, is plenty. What I mean by overnight is you know 24 hours. So you, I just want to show everybody the water so you guys know 
Okay, we're gonna use, we've already used, we've already inoculated these things with my favorite uh, fertilizer for cloning. Okay, Fox Farm. We do not go by the directions on the bottle, guys. And obviously, pH down with General Hydroponics because you know that Rockwool likes to raise the uh, the pH of the water gradually as they soak. So you're always going to initially pre-soak. You do your soak, and you're going to initially set the pH to five and a half. And you can set your your nutrient or whatever nutrient you're going to use your base nutrient to um, the, for the fertilizer to between 200 and 250 is preference personal preference um, some people tweak it a little bit I don't I stick with what works and gives me the highest rate of success and that's what does and as far as the the butyric acid okay Yes, you did see right. I got it off the, the shelves of my local nursery and I've been using it for five years, five years now. The reason why is this bottle is powder and it's like $4, maybe $3.99 and it lasts me years. And I get just as much, just as much success with this as uh, say an old bottle, an old bottle of Clone X. That's gonna run you. I don't even know if a price tag is on this. Give me a fucking break. Give me a break. Give me a break here. $49.99 for a bottle of Clonex. It's empty anyway. I just wanted to show you guys that's where it belongs. Um, go out. I promise you, you can do a dome, dome by dome by dome, and you're not gonna have any difference in success. Uh, it's a personal preference. If you wanted dump some hard-earned cash on some uh on the same product go ahead and do that but we use this it's what we'll be using so we're going to take some cuts now i'm going to try and take nine cuts off of that which is going to leave that plant plant pretty scarce and uh we're going to go as far as we can with it but we got a pair of scissors okay don't forget use your alcohol to clean them and I've explained everything else. We're going to take the cuts and then we're going to put them in the water. Once we got our cuts, we're going to go ahead and dip in the rooting hormone and then we're going to plug them inside the cubes. So let's get started. So the top of the plant right there. And I don't want to take too much, but just enough. So I usually go about four or five down. So we're like one. This is the very top node right here. We're going to go one, two, three four that'll leave us right here okay that's a nice healthy piece you're gonna clip that off and uh, we'll just go ahead and do it just like that all the way you want to trim up any of those those odds like that because you don't want stuff getting mold and mildew any kind of dead material on that stem will turn moldy so we're going to go ahead place it in our cup over here you don't want to create an air embolism inside the main stem so we're going to cut and then place in water as fast as we can obviously i was just doing that on camera so so one two three and then I kind of just plug around like, huh, what's the best, best, best spot to take this? Because you got to remember, we're kind of like pruning this plant at the same time. So I'm going to take it like down here. I'm going to go one more down. We're going to cut this stuff off. There we go. Sorry, guys. There's, there's no display monitor for me to see the... So you can see what that looks like. Again, I just take the scissors. You can take a scalpel or a razor or anything you wish. I just like to use the edge of the scissor. Kind of brush it up a little bit. You can see how that works. Snip it off. It's fine. And 
We always like to do a 45 degree angle. Hope you guys can see that. And the camera's having trouble focusing in on all this stuff going on. So that's two. Let's go in here and take another one. I'm gonna come down here and we're gonna do three. Okay. Just squeeze it up in. And we're left with our a decent cut. Like I said, I'm going to do as much as I can off of this one. We're going to take one here. A lot of people like these cloning videos. So, you know, I guess that's uh, a lot of people have trouble cloning. I don't have no trouble cloning. I will go over the uh, general required um, atmosphere, you know, uh, here, there's another one back here, okay, take that one, it's not as big, but it works, you know, I don't want to take too much, you go too low, I'm trying to keep things even, while we take these clones here, so we got another we got another one here. Yes we do. Perfect. Again, not as thick of a cut, but really a really nice cut. We're gonna go ahead and um, leave that on. I'll trim it up once we get everything as far as we want. Nice one right here. Go about four down on that one. I know some people want me to wear a helmet cam. Not quite there yet, but we're, this is good enough. So if there were any more purple than this, I wouldn't be taking cuts, guys. Okay? But right now we're in the safe zone with what I've explained to you. And I'll repeat myself. I know it's not 100% perfect, but it works. It will get you by, save you some time, allow these plants to recover a little bit. Now I'm prepping this plant for the next growth. So I'm going to be taking away minor doodads that will just get in the way in the long run. So, little doodads. No, I don't want too much because I plan to do, a, like really, really train this thing out in the long run. We're gonna turn this into a flowering plant and for that I need to keep it as squat as possible. Obviously we're standing like 30 inches tall here and um, you can see how much I have reduced this plant here compared to its partner, neighboring partners. So we've taken a good amount off, which is good because we're running under the LEDs. So I've gone about as far as I want to personally go. I could probably steal another one here. Let me see, let me see. See if I can steal another one. I don't want to steal anything that's going to turn into a crazy producing branch in the long run. There's one way down here. I'll steal that one and I'll leave a couple small little, small little nodes on the bottom so that if we do shoot for a lower squatting plant, we have to put it back. We can rely on those bottom nodes to do some regeneration growth for, for us. And these are all things to keep in mind while you're pruning your plants. Okay. Uh, let's see, that one, if I bend that one down in the future, see, right here, I'm already analyzing and thinking about the future, okay? What these fuckers are gonna want, what I'm gonna wanna do under a scrognet in the future, because. I'll steal another one from the bottom. It's good enough for me. OK, 
Okay. Now, on this plant over here, I can't really be stealing anything from the bottom because it's just too purple. This one was pretty consistent with the uh, minimal pur purple streaking. Again, you know, I'm going to say it over because I already know I'm going to get some feedback on it. Those weren't perfect. Yeah, they're not perfect. I, I'm already telling you that. So, uh, some of these leaves we're going to get rid of. Kind of leave the plant. Separate it from these other ones so you can kind of see where we're at. So in the future, I'm going to open this up like this. We're going to put it under a scrog net. So premeditating what the kind of growth that I'm going to be looking forward to in the future. We got a lot of we got a lot of stems here. Now let me tell you, we've topped this, essentially topped every stem here. So whatever you see here is times at least times two. Okay, so right here. This is a main stem. It's going to go down. It's going to go down. That's two, but it's actually four. Okay. There's another one. That's three. We got this one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So they got ten colas on top of this small little plant in a one gallon cocoa pot. But the thing is, you could just times that by two essentially because it's going to be 20 colas that's going to break and they're, once these start growing they're going to stretch, they're going to stretch tall. We're going to start feeding them and wrapping them around the scrog nets and that's how we get those big plants. So there's a lot more to it that goes into a cloning session rather than just, oh, let's just clip away. This, you know, I don't want to say too much. You know, it's a little a little experience goes a long way. That's what I'm trying to say. This is not difficult. Don't be afraid to do this. I know people are really, they've grown out their plants. They've spent so much time and they're so happy. I understand the, the uh, frustration and the, the anticipation and never have um, done this before if you're if you're experiencing that, that, that anxiety that you have about cutting up your plants. Remember, these are just weeds. All these are gonna grow back just fine. You're not hurting your plant. I'm just simply trying to tell you what you can get away with and what you cannot get away with and what you shouldn't do. Um, essentially, if all these were purple and, I'm, and I really wanted to take clones, well, I'm shit out of luck. They're just, they would be too purple. They're too purple. I'm not gonna be taking any cuts from them. It's gonna take about between one and two weeks to regenerate or re, you know, re, you know, to get that plant healthy again and regenerate it to, you know, 100%, uh, you know, back to its original 100% health. So it generally takes, if you're super depleted or, or toxic with magnesium issues and stuff like that, but uh, this is a magnesium issue but you will be surprised. It's not a magnesium issue based on uh, either being too little or too or or too much. It's not toxic and it's not deficient. Can you guess what this one was? It's temperature related, guys. So if you guys find yourselves in a region in the, in the United States, wherever you may be, that is. Uh, temperature the temperatures are really low like they're like 40 50 degrees in this room okay um, sometimes which is why we threw up this tent we threw a bigger light in here we turned off the exhaust fans this light keeps this this area in here 75 between 75 and 80 degrees right now which is why these plants have spent the last few days becoming really healthy again and uh, they're in a, they're in a state right now where it's 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 completely fine to take uh, clones. But, again, if you live in a cold environment, it's just, you're gonna have magnesium problems, okay, due deficiency, because the plant is so cold that it's just naturally not gonna want to absorb those nutrients. You gotta remember that plants like to die off in the fall. And if it's too cold in your room, like it is outside, your plants are naturally just going to want to die. That's just the way it is. That's the laws of nature. Okay, so take that into account when trying to decipher whether you have a toxicity or a deficiency. It may not be either. You may be spot on. Okay, you may just go ahead and go, oh, I think it's a deficiency. And you add a ton of more magnesium 
when you are already fine, creating a problem that you never had when it was all temperature related. I hope that makes sense. I don't want to drag that out, but I do want to give people the full rundown on what to think about when you're cloning because your success in cloning stems from your knowledge of cloning or experience or your failures or lack of experience. So I'm trying to give you a visual on perspectives, what to do, what not to do, what to look out for and how to make things better. So essentially putting these plants in, a, in an enclosed tent with a little recirculating fan. Believe me, all these ports are, are open, but they're not circulating. So, you know, there's some minimal fresh air coming in it's not ideal because it's cold as fuck in this room and i'll show you how we're going to heat that up once we get and uh get into the video session but the point is that you may not be deficient or toxic at all it may just be too cold okay or sometimes even too hot that's just the way it works so let's get on with the tutorial let's go over here okay so you see what we're using right now you see that we got all the plants here we're gonna plug things in do my best here make sure we're not falling over now, since I've started using the powder you know I just bought it on a whim I got tired of kicking out $50 a bottle for products and I just stopped using products that just cost me a lot of fucking money so um, this was the first place that I started saving a penny and I don't mean a penny, I, shit, I'm saving a lot of money, guys. So, you you add that up. I haven't purchased a bottle of cloning gel in a couple years, a few years now, easy. Going on five years, I'd say. We're going to go ahead, and obviously the end of that is already wet. Okay, it needs to be a little wet. Like this. And no... Freaking garden safe is not paying me to make this video. Come on, don't make stupid comments like that. This is just a simple, you know, walkthrough with you guys. Um, my intentions with this grow, you can see how I plug that in, okay? You don't want to all the way to the bottom, but did you notice what I didn't do? I did not use that center hole. We did not protrude through the bottom. Okay, that's healthy. Now you're gonna to wanna to situate it in a way to where these leaves are not going to rub on the back and rest on the back of these domes because a lot of humidity builds up on those domes. Those, the tip of those leaves, if they sit in a too much humidity and too much water against the, pressed against the side of those domes, they will, guaranteed, See, I'm gonna cut that one off a little bit. I don't like the angle of that. So make it nice and straight. You still wanna clean up the garbage. Now we got a nice healthy clone. It's been sitting in water. Okay, so water is inside. We don't have to worry about any air embolisms. So this, where I'd say that's probably about less than an inch, okay. We're going to go to the side of the cube. We're going to plug it. I'm trying to watch the monitor as I do this, which is awkward. Okay. There you go. Let's just do it all. As many clones as we could take without over, over pruning that plant is what we set out to do. Okay. Some of them are sh slightly shorter. We dipped it slightly shorter than the other ones. We're going to have press that one towards the center, get it nice, slow as we can. That's a beautiful set clone. That was a shorter one, which is why I said get it as low as we can. Okay, so same thing with this. Looks really good, just like that. Stem's already wet. That's all you need. You know, I'm already anticipating a lot of people are gonna be like, oh man, all I use is cloning gel or 
whoever. There's a lot of different companies. It's not just Clonex. My, my point is, is that these companies are just too invasive with their marketing and uh, it's just led to unnecessary spending in the market and uh, where I think you should be focusing your success is your knowledge and experience and uh, experience with products, that's all. If you choose to use a cloning gel over what I'm doing here, I do not have anything against that. Nothing at all. That is your, that is your choice. Okay, we're gonna go in at an angle, only because it's kinda take it from a lower part of the branch. Once this hits the light, this is gonna turn upwards. You can see we're that's kind of like sloped to your left there. Trust me, it starts rooting, it's turning upwards. That's six beautiful ones right there. My goal was to, to get to nine, okay? We can get nine of these bad boys. I am a happy camper. So you can see the green. Right, let me get you, let me get the camera to change. It's set on auto mode right now, which apparently, oh, there we go which apparently isn't working as well as it's supposed to be working. It's a decent camera, it's got a Leica lens and everything, but anyway. Um, don't ask me too much about camera equipment. I'm not too savvy with all that. I, I know people shoot with these big elaborate systems. And we are left with, I'm gonna take all of them. Even if we're left with more than nine, I'm still gonna take them, guys. Okay. Now I gotta clean this one up a little bit because I don't want that that right there at the bottom becoming a little nuisance when it comes to rooting. You don't want any kind of mold or bacteria to start any kind of problems for you. Okay. Go all the way down. Nothing protruding out of the bottom. Let me pick. If you guys are limited to, let's just hypothetically say nine, um, I am not limited here. Although I I, I do it in um, and with regards to what is obviously uh, re what resources I'm working with. So in this garden, I don't need too many plants. But we're gonna produce, I'm gonna show you guys how to produce fucking seven pounds. Six pounds, easy, easy. I'm pushing for seven, but we're gonna do easy six in this room, okay? And that may be even an understatement. I'll reevaluate that comment once we get to that point. But right now, we're just going to clone on, on camera, guys. We're cloning on camera. I'm gonna upload this video when I get back to an internet source. So, um, oh, sorry, that's nine. Let me get one more cube. We're gonna do 10. We do as many as we can. I wanna do as much gorilla as possible with a couple Skywalker OGs on camera with you, because I don't think I've shown that one before, but oh my God, it's an amazing strain. This is gonna be a lengthy video, so bear with me, okay? It's a lot of uh, ins and outs. And I know a, a lot of videos have been beaten to death on cloning, but and that's why I don't like to take them. But here's, here's the issue. I still get lots of requests for them. So if you don't want to watch this video, don't watch it. That's fine. You, you probably already know how to clone and you know the parameters that you're able to work within. Okay, the reason why we're using domes okay. is because this is a very dry climate. It's all very cold, but very dry. So in the case of you living in a demographics or geographical, so I should, geographical location where it's, it's cold but dry, use a dome. Okay, but if it is cold but humid, 
you don't have to use dump. Okay, all you got to do is place these clones inside a, like a tent over here behind us, and okay, voila, we're gonna leave all the ports to the dome closed. We're gonna come in here tomorrow. We're gonna see some built-up humidity. I'm not gonna. I won't show that on camera tomorrow. I'm just explaining to you the obvious, which will take place over the next week. We will not take this lid off for a week. Okay. After a week, we'll take we'll take the dome off. We'll evaluate the bottom because, trust me, if you're doing it right, if you're keeping this around. 75 80 degrees I prefer 80 degrees somewhere around that area those margins if you're keeping it within those uh, temperature ranges you're gonna get you might get some roots you might be ready to go on some of them so but that doesn't mean go ahead and just you know start separating them at that point go ahead sometimes just go ahead and put it back in and let it you continue to um, go a little further and let the other ones catch up because you'll be surprised that some of the other ones that haven't rooted yet when you'll see one rooted first some of those other ones will literally even the ones that will root last will dominate the ones that rooted first you'll be surprised so don't just choose the first rooter as the winner okay literally take your time with this and uh, evaluate all the clones when we get to day 14 at day 14 you're going to, and we'll be going over day day seven. We're going to go over on camera. Day fourteen, we're going to go over on camera with these same clones, um, and we're going to evaluate them. I'm going to tell you my thought or theory, what I'm going to do and why, as we move forward with this cloning dome right here. Okay, I'm sorry this is such a long, lengthy video, but to cover all the aspects of you know getting a successful. Uh, cloning session, it, I think it's uh, essential. You know, you can't just show people how to build, you know, build Rome in a day. You know, I'm not saying this is Rome, but this is the this is the foundation to having a success, a successful grow. Starting off with healthy cuttings, and um, I think showing you guys what you can get away with and what you can't get away with to where we're at to where we're at right now was a full. A full tutorial okay um, if you guys got any other questions that I haven't covered by all means feel free to drop those questions in that box right there and I'll do my best when I have time to answer every single one of those questions um, so what I'm gonna do with this dome is because the temperatures are between 75 and 80 in here and this is obviously on an 18 hour light cycle it's veg we're going to place that dome in the bottom of this tray and right now on the spider farmer lights because to show you we're running spider farmer we are running at 35 percent let me take you in there 35 percent and we're easy two feet and you can see we're easy two feet from the top of the tallest plant you know Maybe about 20 inches on that one. That's a little taller than this one. But more than two feet on this one. We're probably about a good 30 inches. Okay, easy. So there you go, guys. Now, when we come back in seven days, I'm going to show you, because I'm going to show you the dome, I'm going to show you what's what, the, what kind of uh, growth and uh, growth characteristics that this plant is going to go through and uh, why we I've already explained this a little bit why we um, prune this plant the way we did obviously you could strip from the bottom and we we do that when we were ma meticulously manning, managing plants from you know the ground up per se but um, and you're just looking to start that flowering session but in this case we're looking to keep these things a little shorter so we look and cut some of that growth away to keep them squatter so and uh, encourage that multi-tier cola session because this thing is just this is one plant if I put this in a seven gallon pot right now um, which I'll hear discuss here in a second this will fucking take off all you need is one plant 
in a tent like this. Now don't get me wrong, if you want to run four strains and five or seven gallon pots in this tent, you can, and you can do that and that's fine. But, you know, it's, you know, it's just personal preference. You know, I'll, I'd rather have one big plant, everything nice and even, and run four tents. Because you got to remember, we're going by plant count, guys, in some situations. If you're only, let's hypothetically say you're only allowed four plants in this situation, I would be buying four tents and growing these to be four monsters as opposed to four small juveniles. You see what I'm saying? Because if you have four tents, four monster plants, you're going to get four times the monster weed. So you got to always keep your options like that and anal analyze things like that. So you're getting the most out of the resources and time that you have invested into this and this is time that you're never going to get back so you can literally go on to only use one tent but you're never going to get those 120 days back and what I mean 120 days is from start to a finished flower in a bag okay so this is going to be a long haul so stay tuned we're going to this is going to be a long one it's going to be 120 day grow right now and we're going to take you from start all the way to the finish. All right, guys. Hydro Hybrid, peace out. I'm not gonna go do. I'm not gonna do the other ones. It's irrelevant. It's just redundant to be doing those other, these other strains on camera. There you have it, guys. That concludes our cloning tutorial, clone session. So you can see where we're at. That one's a little bit big, bigger, and that's totally fine. I like all these little tiny branches that are coming off. We could always work with this larger one in the back. This one right here, meaning. But I got everything pruned to where I want to see things grow out in the future. We got our our future offsprings right here. Okay, we did get a full nine. And we got a full six right here. So I took four of this and I took two of those. And that's what we're looking forward to running uh, coming up. Don't forget to click on the links in the description to support our subscribers. That is what keeps this channel going. You click those links, you buy some gear, you know, that, that keeps me, you know, going with the grow sessions that supports, that supports it in a way to where we can continue making these videos in the future. All right, guys, Hydro Hybrid, peace.